Hello and welcome to Roots to Sprouts. You all know that we have been doing this episode called Know Your Bugs and we are covering about different bugs that you see commonly in the garden. In that list, today we are going to see when it is larva it is called as grub and when it is an adult it is called as Japanese beetle. This is a very common bug that you could have seen in your garden while tilting the soil or while prepping the bed. And in this episode we are going to address three things. How and when to treat these bugs and what are the damages it could cause and how to control them. So let's get into the video. This is the perfect time to talk about Japanese beetle because my roses are just started to come with new leaves and some new buds and also in your lawn you will see the new green grasses are coming as the spring started. Later the season around June and July these Japanese beetles will create problem to your rose plants as well as to your lawn. These beetles don't need an introduction. You must have seen these Japanese beetles in your garden. And these are some of the videos that I want to show you that they basically they chew the plants, the leaves and the roots and they completely damage your plants. Let's talk about the life cycle of these Japanese beetles that might help you to know how to control them at, at what time. They live about 11 months of the year under the ground as grubs. As the weather get warm during late spring, they get emerged and they come out for two reasons. One is to eat and the second one is to reproduction. They don't come alone, they come in a huge number and their lifespan is very interesting. Above the ground, they live on an average 4 to 5 weeks. I heard most of the time it is like maximum 30 days. That's their lifestyle. But in that 30 days, the amount of damage they try to create and the, the number of eggs they, they lay under the soil or the ground, that will create a lot of problem in late spring and early summer. And this is the bed that I'm going to prep for this season. And we had some winter vegetables from last year. And I'm sure there are some Japanese beetle eggs hatched and uh, there will be some grubs for sure. As I'm doing this process, I will explain you why we see these grubs. In Japan, these beetles are not a serious threat because of the environmental situation for these bugs are not uh, allowing them to create major issues. But in North America, it's different. We have to take several measures and controls in order to take care of these bugs. Otherwise, as I said, this will create a major damage to our garden, to our lawn. Here are a few examples that you see the grub chewing the roots and trying to get inside the soil when I try to dig them out. And here is another example in your lawn. Whenever you see a patch which is missing grass, that's definitely because of the grub underneath this particular spot. You have to dig and take the soil and you, should, you will definitely find the grub. Or there are other ways you can try to uh, control them. The one way which I normally do is when I'm prepping the garden like this, I will hand pick them and I will feed the birds. I'm going to show that what I'm telling now. In our experience, it's better to control them at the grub stage than we allow them to come out as a beetle because once it becomes a beetle, it's going to multiply and it's going to add more number of grubs for the next season. So it's a perfect opportunity for us to take care of them at this time. There are some natural ways to get rid of these Japanese beetles by incorporating some plants such as chives, garlics, um, marigold, white geranium and there is a one funny and interesting thing about this white geranium. They love the smell and they attract to this particular flower, geranium flower but after intaking that flower what happens is these Japanese beetles get paralyzed and they get completely paralyzed for a few hours or even a day in the, in the spot where they ate that geranium. So that's another perfect time for you to take and put them in a soapy water so that it kills them. Or by applying the neem oil a couple of times in the week continuously will also take care of them in the short window. 
So these are all the first line of defense that you can control the Japanese beetle. But the root is you have to get rid of them as they are at the larva stage which is the grub what you see here. So I normally hand pick them when I tilt and prep my bed and I keep it in a tray like this and uh, I, I, I know there is a favorite spot in my backyard where I keep this tray and the birds will come just in like couple of hours and they know exactly in the tray what they will find and they and they disappear in like 15-20 minutes max. So what you see in this picture is just an example I, I shot uh, when I was when I kept the grubs in the plate there and uh, I can see the birds coming immediately because they know um, once they see the plate there there are going to be grubs for them. So they come here and they take them and within like a couple of hours max they completely take care of those grubs in the plates. So they had their full lunch for now and they had taken some for their babies as well in the nest. So look at the plate now, it's so empty, at least 15 or 20 grubs they have taken um, in, in less than few minutes. Let's look at the other options how you can control these grubs at the early stage. Number one is <coughs> nematodes. And the second is milky spore. Let's take a look at how to apply these and how this will control the grubs at the early stage. So what you see in the picture, this is the beneficial nematodes. The nematodes are microscopic parasitic round worms that are kind of bacteria which seeks out the grubs from the soil immediately. And these nematodes are, they do not harm human plants, pests, even earthworms in your soil when you should apply these nematodes. Nematodes should be applied in the morning or in the evening because of the temperature that the soil will hold. The best temperature that it can hold is between 40 to 80 degree Fahrenheit. Anything above that these nematodes will automatically dies because of the temperature variance. So the best time is either before the sun rises or in the morning or in the evening when the temperature is kind of between the range what I mentioned before. And another common question is how long does it take to see the results? Usually it takes 3 to 7 days with maximum effort occurring over few weeks that is like 2 to 3 weeks. As a result you will not see any dead insect bodies in your soil. The reason is nematodes disintegrate the pest from the inside out. So you will not see any of the dead insect bodies lying in your soil anywhere. The best time to apply these nematodes is during the early spring or the late fall because that is the time the soil contains the insect larvae which is the, the early stage of the grub. Most of the beneficial nematodes are adaptive to the cold weather. In fact, the best time to control the white grubs is spring or fall. Another common question is when, when these nematodes are packed like that in a, in a container or these are like active and live, actually you need to activate these nematodes by applying it in a water and spraying it like what I am doing here. That is how these nematodes are, are activated and it turns life and they take action against the white grubs. These nematodes are transparent so they cannot be seen by the naked eye. If you can see these nematodes organism then it is not a plant parasitic nematode. It should be something else. Okay now let's take a look at milky spore. The video I took last year when I applied this milky spore powder in my lawn I misplaced and I couldn't find that. I will keep searching for it and if I find I will try to post that in some other Know Your Bug episode for you to look at it. But now what I want to tell you is that the difference between the nematode and the milky spore is the nematodes will give more immediate control but you have to apply a couple of times in a year during the spring and the fall but the milky spore will have a slow and steady inoculation process it slowly spread and gives the control and the result of that will stay for few years so that's the difference between the nematodes and the milky spore like nematodes 
milk yeast powder is also harmful only to crops not harmful to human any beneficial insects or pets or plants anything since i lost my video i am giving a link of another youtuber who did uh, who applied this uh, milky spore in his backyard and also there is a um, application tool that is available or you can make your own a uh, tool by yourself with the help of pvc pipe and he did a amazing job in explaining how to do that um application tool as well as how to apply these milky spore in the backyard in the garden so i hope you like this video uh, let me know what you think and uh, how this resulted in your garden after applying any of these methods i'll talk to you on another different episode about know your bugs keep watching and supporting us on these informative videos thank you so much take care bye